Hey everybody, this is a quick walkthrough of uh, creating a time slice uh, using Time Slice 1.0, which is a brand new desktop application uh, that I have put out. You can get the app here at the Camera Stupid website. It's just camerastupid.com. I go over here to the products drop down and time slice is right there. And this is the page now with the checkout. So what's a time slice? A time slice, uh, you may have seen some examples of just when you take a time lapse, a series of, of still images over time, and then combine them by slicing them into a single image. So here's some examples. Uh, here's one I shot uh, just last night of the Salt Lake City uh, skyline. And so you can see over here uh, the, the time lapse was capturing images uh, while it was still light outside. And then as time progress, progresses, the images get darker and darker. And you start to see the city lights as the sun goes down and the lights come on. And so you could you could do one of these in Photoshop. Uh, you know, it would be a matter of oh, either manually masking or cropping images and combining them. Uh, and you could tell that with this many images, it would be a really time-consuming time and annoying process. So this application uh, makes combining a time lapse into a time slice super super easy and super fast. Uh, I'll just show you a few more examples here. You can you can do a linear slice with the app. Uh, that's what this is. You can also do radial slicing. So this is going to fan out the slices radially in a radial manner like this. Uh, of course, there's horizontal and vertical slicing, and then there's also an option to do uh, drop shadows to kind of separate each slice. So a few examples there. To prepare the images, I like to use Bridge, Adobe Bridge. Uh, you could do this in Lightroom as well. But I just navigate to my image set. So you can see here, I don't have a ton. I find that just uh, showing a time lapse that kind of spans day to night or morning to early morning to, to day, anything that shows a transition or a change in color works best. So here in Bridge, I have uh, my image set selected and we just need to convert these into JPEG images. So I've selected my, my batch. I've got my first light image and then my last dark image. I've selected all of those. If I just go to Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor, I'm going to choose a folder and then uh, under File Type here, Save as JPEG. And that will convert all of my images into JPEG images. And I've already done that, so we'll go ahead and skip that step. But if we browse to the folder here, you can see all of the JPEGs that, that converted. So there's my JPEG images. Once you've got all those in one spot, so I've got the Time Slice app open here. The uh, current version is 1.2. I'll continually be adding features and updating the app as time goes on. The first screen of the app uh, has this use one in one images and you can change this. Say you have a larger batch of time time lapse images and you don't want to use every image in the slice. Um, you know if you skip and use one in two images, so that's going to use half of your images, every other image, uh, then, then the transition between each image will be greater. So depending on how you shot your time lapse, you may want to adjust this setting. Uh, we're going to use uh, every image for this one and then just select images and you're going to navigate to where you had your JPEGs and go ahead and select your, your JPEG batch hit open and you'll see they'll load into here and then you have a few settings you can use to determine the final result so there's a few different slicing methods linear and in linear you can choose a degree so in here I can put uh, let's say uh, 45 degrees and you get a little preview there of, of what the slice will look like uh, for this one I know that uh, 90 degrees actually looks pretty good uh, but it might take some experimentation to find out what looks good for the time lapse that you shot so I'm going to use 90 degrees you could also uh, use radial here 
So this option lets you do that radial fan type slicing. And the origin, origin point by default puts the origin of that radial slice right in the center of the image. So by adjusting this uh, between 0 and 1, um, we'll, we'll change where that origin point starts. So if you move the origin Y to say 1 and leave the origin X at 0.5, uh, the fan will start at the bottom center of the image and fan out from there. So that's radial slicing. Uh, you can also, there's an option here to reverse the image order. So say you shot a time lapse from, from sunset to dark. Uh, if, if you leave this as it is, then the, sun, the sun, sunny side of the image will be on the left and it will transition to dark on the right. You could easily reverse that just with this checkbox. And then there's a drop shadow option here, uh, forward or backward, uh, depending on which side of the slice you want the, the drop shadow to show up on. And then you can change the transparency of that drop shadow here with the drop shadow alpha. A lower number will be more transparent and a higher number will be more opaque. Okay, so I've got the settings set up how I want, and we'll just hit start. And you'll get a progress bar here that will show you the progress of the slice. This will take a little bit of time depending on how many images are in the time slice, as well as the resolution of those images. Okay, so the slicing has completed on this one, and you can see here uh, the image that you see is just a low resolution JPEG preview. Uh, so don't get discouraged when you see that this is pretty low res, pixelated. That's just the preview so that it, the app stays fast and you can kind of resize and see what the slicing is doing. To get the high res out, you just hit the save button here. And right now the only option is JPEG. Uh, we probably be adding uh, other file formats to save out as in the future. Uh, but just type a, a file name. and a location to save it at. Hit save and that will save out the high res JPEG. You can go ahead and open that and you can see the full res image. The resolution of the final image will be the same as one of the single frames in your time lapse. So it's just gonna use whatever resolution you're shooting each of your frames for your time lapse as the final resolution of the image. So that's a look at the Time Slice 1.0 app. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video or contact me uh, through the Camera Stupid website. And see you next time.